Hello and welcome back to Speed Demon Painting. Today we are taking a look at the updated Orbat for the Alliance. So grab a glass of your finest wine and uh, allons-y! The first thing we have to do when we're looking at an updated Orbat is sort of keep an eye out for anything noted in red because War Cradle does make sure that all of their changes compared to the previous versions are uh, in a different color just so veteran players can find them more quickly. And if you haven't yet, you can always check out my first version of the Orbat as well if you want to see the comparison for this one. Now the reason why this one was updated is because the first French fleet has arrived. It was the Oriflam box and uh, well, a bit of a spoiler, but when we're going through this Orbat we can see quite a bit of fleshed out artwork for different French fleets. So I'm expecting those in the near future as well. And when it comes to the Alliance special rule, not a lot has changed. Coordinated support is the big one that got a change. Um, you get plus two to aerial and submerged defenses for ships with this rule if it is within 10 inch or uh, of one of the other friendly units with the flagship traits. Meaning uh, a flagship with this rule no matter automatically hands it to itself. You do need something uh, other next to it which makes sense when the rule is coordinated support you can't just coordinate with yourself in this regard other than that not really a lot of changes in this one so let's carry on the big thing that has changed though is in the battle fleets um, there hasn't been any changes to the actual generic fleet uh, or the access to mercenary fleets but we do have the brand new oriflam battle fleet in this uh, in this composition this one's brand new and um, well there's no surprise that you have to take an oriflam class battleship flagship when you do so but you have to include one of the uh, chevalier which means knight units in this one and you can just flesh it out with three more french uh, ships uh, units i should say as you please however you can't include any aerial units um, or more than two of any unit except for Chevalier which is the standard ship for uh, the standard cruiser for the French or uh, Equiere classes which are their small frigates and the benefit to doing so is that you get a commandery role which is always nice of course and if you have a maximum sized Chevalier unit which is three of them if I'm not mistaken then all, uh, then all units in the battle fleet receive a coordinated support bonus of not just plus two, but plus three instead. So that is a quite a nifty upgrade. Expect some bigger defense for your French forces, um, which is quite useful because some of the flying ships, as we noted in the first uh, overview, are, uh, are not quite that heavily armored, or rather they have a few lower hull point values than you would expect in other factions. Other than that, there have been no real changes to um, to the different generators, except for a change that we'll see probably in every single Orbat update now in the future, and that's the fact that shield generators cannot be used against assaults. Um, this is just a little bit of a clarification. Personally, we've never played it with shield generators <coughs> protecting you against assaults. Um, but yeah, it's been added to the rules as a bit of clarification, which is always good to see. As we're going on over the uh, the weapons themselves, the heavy prow ram is now a ramming 10 weapon with piercing, which is uh, a good thing to see that it's uh, been changed. And the French also now have access to, he or I don't think it was the French, I think it was the Italians, now having access to heavy torpedo salvos as well. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, that is on the uh, Mars battleship. Um, the regular prow ram is of course added, added as well, being changed to ramming 6 in this case with piercing, which is enough to do quite a bit of damage if you want to. Now, onto the flagships. The uh, the first review I did of the uh, the flagships had me looking at the Magenta Levant battlecruiser, which is sort of a heavy battlecruiser and you could notice that by it having slightly lower armor than a full battleship, and quite a bit lower citadel compared to the other one. It's been upped to have six hull points, which is great, and it's got a new point cost associated with it. My main gripe with the first iteration was that it was a bit on the expensive end of the scale uh, for what you were getting for such a brittle ship. Um, 
they have reduced the point cost by a nifty minus 15, which is nothing to, uh, to scoff at. And um, on top of the point cost reduction, it has received an update, an upgrade, I should say. It's uh, rolling broadsides were changed to heavy rolling broadsides. So that is a big boost right there to this ship. And there is a new rule here that we'll see in quite a few different um, Levant ships that we'll see those uh, heavy skimmers. And that is the Levant Surge. Um, in the special operations phase of the round, if the ship is battle ready and only then, this unit can make a Levant Surge. For the remainder of that round, the unit gains plus three movement, so that's a big one already there. It ceases to be a skimming unit and it instead becomes a full blown aerial unit. A unit cannot make a Levant search if it has already done so in the previous round or if it is joined with another unit using the escort duty rule. So you really want to avoid uh, escorting any of these uh, flying skimming ships with non-skimming ships because that is a very juicy role to get. In a way it's sort of the opposite of what the, the Wave Lurker role does for, uh, for the Enlightened and I really really do like that, especially liking it with this new artwork that they dropped for this ship. Um, these things are going to be near full flyers when you want them to be and be regular old skimming ships when you want it to be as well. Um, so that's that's some extra flexibility, although as the French player you will have to be mindful of when you want to use that uh, uh, full aerial unit rule, because you can't just do it as well. And I actually like that very much, because lore-wise, the French are the ones that re uh, invented the repulsion generator technology, so them having access to something that can uh, go above and beyond what other factions can do with that technology is a really, really cool thing to see as well. Small change as well to the Italian uh, ship, it's the uh, Mars Heavy Battleship. This one was not made cheaper, instead it got a plus 5 uh, point cost. However, uh, we see a change in the uh, aerial defense value and a change in the fray as well. But the big thing uh, on this one is its torpedo salvo, which was the only thing that didn't start with heavy, <laughs> with the heavy battleship which weird has been changed to become a heavy torpedo salvo so that's all good it still functions as sort of a, a big old heavy battleship that has a bit of a hybrid role with uh, the advanced repair facilities so i'm very much looking forward to seeing the italians join in as well and um, i can't believe i don't think this is going to be too far off as well because as you can see here the the artwork is already pretty fleshed out. This is the box art level uh, uh, art that they make when uh, a release is imminent, so we shouldn't be waiting too long for this. Next up is uh, the changes to the Minerva Assault Carrier, which is uh, a bit of a, uh, yeah, a hybrid carrier as well. Um, it was a Mass 3 ship, but with only Armor 7. So a bit like that uh, heavy battle cruiser that we saw. There's been good changes to it though. It's a ship with heavy magazines, so um, you do want to have three weapons that you can use it on. And lo and behold, it now has it. The slightly awkwardly aft and port pointed uh, rocket battery has been changed to be 360 degrees. And the traditional, and it's just gained an extra rocket battery as well. Uh, which is also at a 360 degree uh, shot. So as long as you are shooting at either front or uh, port, you should be able to make good use of that heavy magazines rule, making this one um, a, a plausible uh, hybrid ship. Of course, it being only normal rocket batteries, don't expect to see any firepower, like the, uh, the HMS Ark Royal, for instance, for the British, um, but you know, at 230 points. You can't really expect that much more. And it comes with advanced repair facilities on top of that one with a, a nifty plus three. So I consider this an absolute steal at its current 230 points. And you can shoot, it can uh, let off SRS tokens where you want it. Seems like a very, very solid, uh, solid deal to me, this Minerva. Then there's the Ori Flam, Grand Battlecruiser. 
Uh, it's been reduced slightly in points. I forgot to denote how much uh, it was reduced though. If I'm not mistaken, that was 240. Um, and it's got a new rule. Um, before it had a heat lance, the front facing weapon, that you couldn't change out. You couldn't make it a gun battery, heavy rocket battery, or anything. That's all been changed. You can do so now because the kit comes with it. Um, and of course, it retains the fire arc of the weapon that you have. Other than that, they did a bit of cleanup. Uh, the special rule used to say it had, had ablative armor, um, and now that's ablative flank ar armor, and the rule ablative flank armor now actually has a, a small notation that this rule only counts if you attack it uh, from a point of origin that is in the flank of the ship. So that's one thing. Um, other than that, uh, given how this thing has two gun batteries that you're not able to swap out, at least I couldn't find anything that said that you could. I know it's it's not there. Um, it makes sense to uh, make or turn this one, this heat lance, into uh, into a heavy gun battery because of that heavy magazines rule. Um, it's a bit of an awkward one because the heavy gun battery that it does have is the one facing backwards, so it makes sense to make the front one um, the uh, the gun battery as well, and uh, yeah, you can still change out that back one if you want to um, to give it any generator that you want. So with a shroud generator, for instance, that really should help with uh, with its protection as well. Also, and this is something we'll be seeing more of in uh, in the other ones. Maritime Patrol, but also a Spotter, has been uh, nerfed slightly. Um, and I expect this to carry over into all of the different Orbats really, really soon when they are updated. Um, it's still the same, you can reroll your blank results when attacking submerged units. However, you used to only have to be within 5 inch of a friendly SRS token. And now you have to, you only get this rule if you're shooting at something directly being uh, tagged by one of your friendly SRS tokens. Um, I think that's a good change though because uh, that makes your uh, your ships that only send out a single SRS slightly more viable and it is a very strong rule so it could do with a bit of a tap on the fingers uh, which is really only what this is. You're just gonna have to put in a bit more thought to where you're going to be sending your SRS token. Further on, we have the Saint-Michel Levant Assault Carrier, which has also received a points reduction of 10 points compared to its previous iteration, so that's a good thing. The hull point, if I'm not mistaken, was uh, bumped up a bit, and you also get that SRS capacity of 6 with this ship, so it's sort of competing with that uh, Italian uh, Minerva ship that we just uh, saw. Also, they have launch catapults, which is always great to see, because it introduces that very useful plus five extra um, inch to launch them and on top of the uh, defensive pilot rule that uh, the French have access to they get a bit bigger interception or better interception I should say and that launch catapult can really make a big difference. We also see the Levant search so you can go full flying should you so desire so yeah buffs all around for uh, the uh, Alliance uh, flagships which is not a bad thing because they had some uh, s uh, some crazy designs compared to other uh, factions and so it's good to see that uh, those uh, shortcomings are compensated somewhat by some extra heavy rules. Right, next up we have the different uh, the meat and potatoes, the normal ships, the non-flagships and uh, there's been quite a few name changes with this first Oriflam uh, box release. The first one being that the, the Orbat used to mention a uh, Victorieux heavy cruiser. That name has now been changed to a Charlemagne heavy cruiser. Um, and the Victorieux used to be 140 points. That's been reduced to just 125, which is quite a steal for a heavy carrier uh, for most factions, as is already. Um, and yeah, you get some very very nifty rules to go with them. The, we the weird thing that it's worth repeating here, the French don't use traditional torpedo salvos uh, mounted in the front of the ship. They have these small torpedo turrets 
mounted on what appears to be slight wings at the back of the ship. And those torpedo turrets have a 270 degree firing arc um, to the side. So if you're in the front or the aft, you can stack those turrets. If, however, you have to shoot at port and starboard, you have to split them up. However, those are very good gun, uh, torpedo turrets with 5-3 at extreme range and long range. Um, stacking two of them together is actually way better than a traditional uh, torpedo salvo. So don't underestimate this heavy cruiser. Um, it has weapons that make it more suited to a medium range firepower role. But as we'll see with all of these French cruisers, They've got some very strong torpedo game as well, because of those two smaller turrets in there. And, coming with the ablative flank armor, um, and quite a few gun batteries, two heavy gun batteries, and a gun battery to the back, along with the special rolling broadside, which is uh, not just a fussy laid weapon, but a full sustained weapon. This packs a punch. This really does pack a punch. Um, but. For heavy cruisers, they are limited to only four hull points uh, in uh, battle ready state and only four in crippled. And that's what you would expect for a regular cruiser in most other factions. So there's a downside to some of the French cruisers as well. They also have hovering ships, uh, skimming units, which are in this case the Chasseur Levant strike cruiser. We've seen this one before. In battle ready has got uh, four hull points that's uh, up from three um, I always thought it was a bit too brittle in the previous version getting that one extra hull point in its battle ready stage does not make it a lot weaker than traditional cruisers do so that very much is a concern that seems to be addressed now and you still get <laughs> that insanely high amount of, uh, of guns to go with it I mean this one is a straight front firing weapon with three small gun batteries and a heavy gun battery. So expect to see a lot of uh, big volleys from these guys and they can still go flying if they want someone starting to like the look of these ships a lot more. Next up we have a traditional floating one, the Chevalier cruiser. The one that we mentioned is uh, the mandatory option in the Oriflamme. Uh, fleet. Um, it's been buffed by giving it a minus 5 point points reduction, bringing it in at 105, and what, what we're seeing at 105 is really really good, because you get the traditional front firing two heavy gun batteries, which is always a good start. It has the special type of uh, broadside, which doesn't always lead to more dice, but that's a different thing. And it has the above average torpedo turret uh, game, uh, because you can stack those up to be, I think, eight dice for your lead uh, cruiser, and then six for everyone supporting it. So if you take a, a unit of these, they're not too expensive, that sets you back 315 points, you are shooting a very, very respectable 20 torpedo shots out of this one. That alone makes it a very solid option in my book. Um, and some factions, mostly the Crown I should say, um, should be looking at this with slight envy because this is the same points cost as an Albion cruiser. I would prefer this one every single time. Um, and I'm just gonna go out and say it. The Albion needs to drop and the Loveless Cruiser for the Enlightenment needs to go up. <laughs> I like the fact that this game has these bread and butter uh, cruisers, very much so, that they're the benchmark for every other faction. But uh, the Crown, if I can go on a little bit of a tangent here, really does have a needlessly expensive one. And when <laughs> we're looking at the Loveless, that one is ridiculously cheap for what it brings to the table. So there you go, my two cents tossed in there as well. Other changes that we see is, first of all, it changed the name because uh, the Equiere is now the name for a frigate. Well, that used to be a name for a, a light cruiser in the previous Orbat. And uh, as frigates go, these are highly respectable. Um, 
slightly above average citadel value, which is a bit of a num uh, you know a non-issue because they've got armor four and two hull points. If you reach eight, you're destroying it on armor value alone. So that extra point in citadel is completely academic. Um, it makes no difference whatsoever, but it's just funny to see. And with 12 speed and 8 turns, these things can turn on a dime as well. And uh, they've got the escort duty for the French, the Oriflamme um, ship, which is always good to see. Because the Oriflamme, like I said, can be changed to become quite a nifty gun battery ship. And then if you've got smaller Equier frigates to uh, go with it, those two have regular gun batteries, which can make for some really, really mean volleys, should you want to. That's something that the uh, the Commonwealth was able to do with their Rurix before they were changed, and that's an option that is still available to the French, so yeah, be wary of that one. However, never escort anything flying, like I said, because then you're sort of missing out on your Levant Surge rule, so you don't want to do this. The Epolar Artillery Submarine is uh, the one with the magnetic bombard and as we see here the only change to it is the fact that spotter has been nerfed. You have to send your token directly to the target that you want to use the spotter rule on. You can no longer uh, rely on any of them being uh, uh, within 5 inch and yeah, in our games at least I will always just go like well let's just use this new spotter rule even if your orbat wasn't changed because you don't want to end up in a weird zone where some orbats are using the old rule and some are using the new rule so yeah to me this is just a blanket rule change for everything then we've got the new furio levant grand corvette again up in hull points like the previous one which is great to see because that was my one big gripe with them if they only had six hull points you're sort of having to rely heavily on the terrain to keep you safe and with that one hull point change it really only brings them down one hull point when they are in a crippled state already <clears throat> and let's be honest if your cruiser is in a crippled state you kind of want to see it dead <laughs> especially because with the speed of six dropping down I'd much rather see the end of it rather than having to drag uh, a semi corpse with your unit along so Hull points only being three in a crippled state, that doesn't even bother me. The good thing about it though, with the escort uh, skimmer roll, this one can actually go with your uh, Levant uh, big flagships, so that's a great thing. And with it being a mine layer for only 120 points and a new hull point system, thumbs up for me, I mean, it's a great change. Then the Loire light cruiser, um, used to be called the Equier, so I made making the comparison to this one when I'm saying that 90 points means that it dropped 5 points compared to the old Equier light cruiser, which no longer exists. And it somehow received a change to fray, which is fine. I mean, I don't really see these uh, ships going into the assault anyway, um, as it is. And these are the ones with your minesweeper, more importantly, with the Vanguard rule allowing them to uh, deploy five inch further can be really crucial in some missions especially salvage rights so i see a place for this unit yet um, especially with speed eight you're sort of relying on a slightly faster ship because this one is in direct comparison with the version that doesn't have the light gun battery at the back and that's the uh, picardy monitor and um, this one drops down in speed somewhat gains two fray um, so the slower ship is the one that's slightly better in assaults but again I don't think that's what you're using them for at 85 points per cruiser um, with maritime patrol and that above average torpedo turret game that I mentioned the French have for using multiple light torpedoes instead of big salvos I, I see this as a very competitive choice I mean you are getting seven hull points for your 85 points so you are, these are a cut above most of the French fleet in terms of number of hull points you get for their uh, cost. So this is, uh, all things considered, a slightly durable option. So even the smallest version of the ships in this, uh, this set seems to have a place within the fleet, which is great because that's what I like to see, a reason to take all of those ships. 
in the PKRD definitely has that. Next up we have the Cyrene attack submarine, that is the French small mass one. Um, there weren't really any changes to these, um, but it has some competition now from the Italian submarines and uh, it's worth comparing the two of them. The Italian one is a hunter submarine which comes with the normal torpedo salvo which is 6-4 at extreme range which is where you'll be f shooting it most of the time because you want to sort of stay at arm's length and if we compare that to just the heat lancet on the uh, attack submarine from the French I mean uh, the, the, the attack mass submarine is definitely the one that you want to bring forward but in general, I don't want to send my mass, mass 1 ships forward. They die a bit too easily for this one. So this new version is the one that definitely caught my attention. Um, but again, it is an Italian ship, so I suppose different fleets with different uh, roles in them. Um, in, in that case, the French already have that very good solid torpedo game. Um, but I can see the Italians through this ship also getting access to a very strong torpedo game uh, if they want to. Um, the only thing that I thought was a bit weird is you get two of these Sagita submarines, or I don't know exactly how to pronounce that, but they get Pack Hunter. <laughs> to me that was a bit odd because you're giving out a rule that requires you to have three models to a unit that starts with a baseline of two. So that was the one thing I was like, well, you, you're sort of going to have to upgrade this one if you want to make, uh, you know, want to benefit from all the rules it has. So that's just a small thing to keep in mind. Nothing major though. And then changes to the Volière Levant carrier. Again, the extra boost in hull point, which is great for these flying ships. It's what I want to see. And it gets the Levant surge as well with uh, an SRS capacity of four now. Um, which is really really good um, Especially now that you want to spread them out more if you want to use your spotter rules and Never ever forget uh, that you can go and hunt for a recon flight or with recon flight um, I have found that mulling through your deck for the really good cards is very strong So I'm almost never leaving home without um, one of these capacity four ships in there because it is almost a complete hand reshuffle that you're carrying as well. So that's a great thing. Yep, yeah, that's it. We got to the end of the, uh, the battle tome. If you liked, the, or the Orbat rather, if you liked the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And then we'll see you the next time. Bye.